on air. And two stolen bases, and the Indians are in business in the first. And they are doing just what the Braves feared Cincinnati would do. Two stolen bases in the inning. The stretch. The 2-1 pitch. Here it is. Swung. A little ground ball to short. Run will score. Bell yard to first. Plenty of time. RBI. The air and the two stolen bases pay off. It's 1-0. Now Nobody on, nobody out. Cleveland on top, one nothing. An unearned run. A on air, two stolen bases and an infield grounder have given Cleveland the lead. Hershiser are into the wind and the pitch, and there's a drive. Deep right center field. Tie game. About 450 feet. Lofton and Ramirez could only admire it, and the game is tied. Another lefty up in the Cleveland bullpen. They have two more available, Jim Poole and Alan Embry. The runners get their leads. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Polonia. Ground ball hit out toward short. Fielded by Vizquel. He can't get it out of his glove. Steps on second just in time. Now drops the ball. But he dropped it taking it out of his glove. Fred McGriff scores to give Atlanta a 2-1 lead. Bobby Cox is going to come out and argue with Bruce Fremming that Vizquel didn't get to the bag in time. Jimmy Williams also racing over. Bobby holding him back. He's going to argue with Fremming. But normally sure-handed Omar Vizquel came up with the ball in what looked like a sure-fire double play that he couldn't get it out of his glove at the last minute he raced to the bag at second got there just in time according to Bruce Fremming a run scores and Atlanta leads it two to one watch out for the squeeze play here first and third one out the stretch by Taveras pitch on the way to Belliard squeeze is on here comes Justice he scores on the first with a throw goes Tavares in time. It's 3-1 Atlanta. Good call, Don. With all the excitement going on, Pete, out there, everybody caught up in the action. Give Bobby Cox some great credit for recognizing that the Indians were upset. Anytime there is a lot of excitement, that is the perfect time to call it. Put it on. Belliard, one of the best bunners. 3-1 Atlanta after a suicide squeeze laid down perfectly by Raphael Belliard. Stretch. There goes Lofton, the 0-1 pitch, bouncing ball to the right side. Mark Lemke up with this one on to first in time. Two men out in the ninth. Moving over to third, Lofton, the throw to third, gets by Chipper Jones. Lofton will come all the way around to score, and that makes it 3-2. They get out number two and a ground out by... Omar Vizquel to Mark Lemke, but Lofton never stopped at second. He kept on going. Remember, he, I, in my mind, broke the back of the Seattle Mariners when he scored from second on a pass ball. He had no intention of stopping at second there and forced an ill-advised throw by Fred McGriff. It allows another run to score to make it 3-2. to two. Charge an error to McGriff. Once again, the crescendo will build here as Maddox gets ready for this 1-2 pitch. Here's the line, the one-two on the way. Bayerga swings, popped up, foul territory, third base side. Chipper Jones racing over to the Cleveland dugout, makes the catch. One down, three to go. The Braves win game one on a superb pitching effort by Greg Maddox. Your final score in game one, Atlanta three, Cleveland two. And any doubters of Greg Maddox's ability to pitch a big game in postseason, you can put your notebooks away, he just has. Everybody on the ball club racing out onto the field. A high five, Greg Maddox and the rest of the Braves who played tonight as Atlanta goes one game up in the 1995 World Series.
259 lifetime average against Glavin. No homers. He was 0 for 3 last night. He'll be the DH in Cleveland, but he's in at first base since we play under National League rules here in Atlanta. It's a lot of ground ball, so he is a double play candidate for Tom Glavin. Switch hitter batting right handed. The stretch by Glavin, the pitch on the way to Murray. Fly ball, deep left field. Ryan Plesco back to the warning track to the wall. It's gone. Two-run homer for Eddie Murray. And the Cleveland Indians jump on top, two to nothing. It's still 2-0 to Chipper Jones. Infield back there looking for two. The stretch and the 2-0 pitch to Jones. Lined in the left field. Albert Bell in, now back. He's got it. The tag by Grissom. He'll stroll home. Lipke stays at first. Sacrifice fly for Chipper Jones. The Indians lead it two to one. Lemke at second. A run in, two gone. A lot of signs being flashed out by Pena. Finally, Martinez has one that he likes. The stretch in the two and zero pitch to Justice. Fastball lined in the right field. Ramirez will play it on a hop. Here comes Lemke. The throw goes in the second. We're tied. An RBI single for David Justice. Go ahead, run at third. One out. Crowd coming to life. And the one two pitch to Lopez. Another side arm pitch driven deep to center field. Back goes Lopez and away. Back that ball. Michael looks in, has the sign. And the 2-1 pitch to Vizcale. Swing and a soft line drive to left. Devereaux slipped and fell. And now he misplays it. The ball gets by him. A run will score. Vizcale on his way to second. He'll stop there. What in the world happened to Devereaux? Mike was playing him shallow and near the line. He went to the, his left to try to make the catch. Overran the ball. He must have lost in the light. That's the only explanation I have. The stretch, the left hand hitter waits. And the 2 2 pitch, here it is. High and inside, snap throw to first, they got it. What a throw by Lopez, quick tag by McGriff. And Ramirez representing the tying run is picked up. The count is 3 and 2 on Tommy. That is a rock. Another 3 2 pitch. The stretch. And here it is. Swung and popped up. Who wants it? 
Shepard Jones calls everybody off, and the Braves win. The Indians left nine runners on base, all in the last six innings of the game, and the Braves have a 2-0 lead as they head to Cleveland. 51,000 people on their feet. Mark Wallers gets the save. Tom Glavin gets the win. Javi Lopez, the offensive hero. And totals and highlights after this. Indian scouting report on McGriff is he likes to jump on the first pitch, especially the first time up. Nagy started him off with a curveball and followed it with a changeup. Remember what he did with the first pitch he saw from Hershiser. A ball and a strike. Chipper, a good size lead the pitch. Swung and lined down the right field line. Ramirez on the run, cannot get there. It falls for a hit, a run is in. McGriff will stay at first, and the Braves draw first blood. McGriff hit it off the end of the bat, just dropped it down the right field line. Manny Ramirez had no chance. Fiscal out of the batter's box. The Cleveland team, like most American League teams, plays at a very deliberate pace. The stretch. The delivery line drives on the right field line. That is a fair ball into the corner. Lofton will score easily. 
Vizquel around second. He races for third. Here's the throw. He is safe. It's a triple, and the game is tied. And the Indians have come out smoking. The Braves didn't think Vizquel could pull smoke. On that pitch, they turned out to be wrong. So it's one to one. There's still nobody out. A runner at third and nobody out. Again, John comes set. He delivers. Swung, hot shot to McGriff. He's got it. He'll take it himself. A run is in. And Cleveland leads. That ball was hit hard. Now there's one out. Nobody on. But two runs have scored. Infield going for two. They'll concede the run to Lofton. The stretch, the pitch. Change up hitting the left field. Softly coming in a hurry is Polonia. He can't get it. Bounces in front of him. Lofton will stroll home. It's a bloop single fly by Erner. An RBI and a 3-1 to lead for the Indians. Three hits in a row by the Indians here in the third inning. That a little topspin lob that just dropped in front of Polonia. He got a glove on it. Kept it from bouncing all the way to the wall. Smoltz taking a long time. Now John's ready. The look to second and the one-two pitch to Bell. Curveball hit back up the middle and through. Viscal will score. Bayerga stops at second. Grissom boots the ball but no advance. An RBI single for Bell. It's a four to one ball game. Four hits in a row by the Indians here in the third. That's the mystery with John Smoltz. Second inning, he strikes out the side. Third inning, four straight hits. Go figure. And now Nagy takes too much time and McGriff steps out. Good pitch to hit here, two and oh, and it's on the way. Fastball swung on, driven deep right field. Back goes Ramirez. He looks up. That ball is gone. A solo two-out homer by Fred McGriff. And that cuts the lead to 4-2. to two. Fred's second home run of the World Series. And the crowd, 43 strong, 43,000 strong, want that ball thrown back, and they do pitch it back before Fred even crosses home plate. Glad you're with us for game three of the 1995 World Series. This is the 91st edition of the Fall Classic. And to tell you the truth, feels a little more like winter here at the Jake tonight. Wind chill down to 29 degrees. And the breeze still gusty up to 25 miles an hour out to right center. Costco one for two stands in. The pitch swing and a drive to deep left center field. Back goes Lofton. He looks up. That ball is gone. Ryan Klesko with a solo clout to left center field, and suddenly it's a one-run game. First pitch of the seventh inning, and Klesko hit it a mile in the left center. And, Joe, before the game, a lot of people down in the field taking batting practice were commenting on how hard it was to get any distance on a ball hit to left center because of the way that wind was blowing out toward right center. The ball was carrying very well to right center and to right, but not very well to left center field, so he had to really hit that ball to get it out out there. He got some great extension on it too, Pete. What a swing. Here comes the 2-0 pitch on the way. Change up ground ball left side, deep short, backhanded by Mordecai. Slips, losing his footing and falls to the grass in shallow left. No throw in to score. Kenny Lofton and the Indians now lead it 5-3. Mordecai got to the ball in shallow left field about two steps back of the cut of the grass. But as he tried to plant his back foot to throw on to first, he lost his footing. Again, the look back by the right-hander. Here's the 3-1 pitch on the way to Polonia. Ground ball right side and through in the right field for a base hit. Grissom around third, heading home. He'll score without a throw. It's back to a one-run ball game. Five to four, Cleveland leads it. As Luis Polonia drives in a run with a single to right. Here's the stretch. 
And the pitch on the way to Justice. He swings, grounds one to the right side. Fielded by Biarga. Bobbled by him. Picks it up now. Throws to first. Not in time. In to score, Luis Polonia. And we are tied 5-5. Five to five. Baerga had it, lost it, picked it up, and threw to first late. So an error by the Indian second baseman enables the Braves to tie the game. Moving over to third, Chipper Jones, safe at first, David Justice. Devereaux this year, while with the White Sox, beat one for three against Tavares with a couple of strikeouts, one for five lifetime. He takes another look down at third base coach Jimmy Williams. Steps back in with a count of one ball, no strikes. There's the stretch. And the 1-0 pitch to Devereaux. Breaking ball, line drive, left center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. In to score, Chipper Jones, and the Braves now lead it 6-5. Mike Devereaux, who delivered the game-winning hit in game one of the National League Championship Series, has just put the Braves ahead in game three of the World Series with a run-scoring pinch hit single. Runners at first and third. Here's the stretch by Wollers. And the pitch on the way to Alomar. He swings and lines one fair down the right field line. In to score, Ramirez. Kirby heads for third. He'll hold up there down to second with a run scoring double is Sandy Alomar. And we are tied at six. Murray, a candidate for a double play. Doesn't run as well as he used to. Normally hits the ball hard. Hits a lot of ground balls. Braves playing slightly to pull into the infield. Shaded the other way in the outfield. Polonia shallow and near the line and left. Espinosa dancing around at second, getting his legs loose. Short lead by Bell at first. The stretch by Pena. And the pitch to Murray. Swung on and hit in the center field. Here comes Espinosa. Grissom's throw is high. Cleveland Indians win it 7-6. There will be a game five. to the bottom of the 11th inning but they come off the mat and make this a 2-1 to one advantage for the Braves Indians win it 7-6 to six. we'll be back to Jacobs Field to wrap it up right after this like some hitters like you to tip them off if you can right. steal signs other hitters don't want to know David said you know he said I just want to go up there dumb he said that's not what I mean you know what I mean the 1-2 pitch to Klesko high and gone Ramirez, one look. That baby is 15 rows back up over the 375 sign. No doubt about that one. And the Braves lead it one to nothing. He may not have gotten all of that one, but he sure got most of it. One ball, two strikes. Avery looking to finish off Bell, shakes off one. Into the line and the one-two pitch. Change up, hit down the right field line and hard. Headed for the corner and out of here. Oh, he is strong. I didn't think that had any chance of going, but it dropped just over the wall into the Braves' bullpen. About 335 and we're tied at one.
whatever else he can hit. And you're right, Don. He just muscled that ball. Steve made a good pitch, had him fooled, but he was strong enough to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Grissom has tried to run every time he's been on against Hill. Long stretch by Hill, no movement. That one's hammered to right center field. Long run by Ramirez. He's not going to get it. Got to go to the wall. Here comes Grissom to third. The throw to Bayerga cut off, and Grissom strolls home. An RBI double for Polonia. He's paying dividends. It's a 2-1 to one lead for the Braves. times when a pitcher comes up and in he's trying to set up that breaking ball away alomar moves out there curveball line in the right center field here comes polonia here comes chipper jones david justice some clutch hitting he high fives pat corrales a two-run single and a four to one lead for the braves he went up and in with a good fastball but then he made the one little mistake he hung the breaking ball right over the plate and Justice didn't miss it. Embry again ready. Lopez waits in the pitch. Swung line down the left field line. A base hit headed for the corner. Should have walked him. Lopez on his way to second. A run is in. It's 5-1. to one. Thank you. Hobby doubles down the left field line to add a very important insurance run. That makes it 5-1. to one. Mark looks in. Ramirez waits. The wind and the pitch. Here it is. Swung and drilled. Deep left field. That ball is way out of here. High and far. Into left field. It's 5-2. to two. And we're not done yet. Ramirez crushed one about 425 feet. So a rude greeting for Mark Wallers in a 5-2 ball game. No matter what happens, if you, even if he loses this game, boy, he showed you he's got the heart of a lion. Yes, he does. The stretch. Now the pitch. Swung and line, right field, Justice going back. He's got it and the ball game is over. Lofton hit it hard. Justice raced to the warning track and speared that ball. They're throwing beer and stuff on David up in the bleachers. He faked throwing the ball into the stands and, of course, scared the cowards out there to death. And the Braves have won the ball game 5-2. to two, And we'll have totals and highlights after this. There used to be a gray and tower alone on the sea. The light that you shine can't be
so much a man can tell me, so much he can say. You tell me he's a happy baby But did you know that when it's night My eyes become a light And the light that you shine can't be seen So Albert Bell stands in. Renard second, two down. Maddox comes set. Lemke in behind the runner. Snap throw is late, but they get Vizquel back there. It'll cut a half step off his lead, I bet. Renard second, two down. The stretch. The pitch. Swung and a drive. Deep right field. Back goes Justice. That ball is gone. <laughs> Bell muscled it out the other way, just like he did last night. With Hershiser on the mound. Cleveland up by two. Listen. about the same spot he hit it last night on the outside corner he had his mind made up the whole time he was going to look for something away and drive it got that over the wall by about six inches here's Eddie Murray Murray stands in and the first pitch to him, a good cut. He fouls it back into the fourth deck. No one won the count. So now the Braves have their work cut out for him. Oral Hershiser has a 2 nothing lead. Again, the wind and the pitch. Look out, high and tight fastball. Murray walks out toward Maddox, and Maddox walks right back toward him. And now both benches empty. No blows have been struck. And now Charlie O'Brien wants a piece of his old teammate, Eddie Murray. And now Frank Pulley has to pull them apart. A little extracurriculars here. Hershiser and Maddox talk it over. And now Eddie Murray's getting on Bobby Cox. If you know Maddox and his reputation, you know he's not a headhunter. He doesn't have to be. One and one the count. Chance for the guys in the bullpen to get a little extra running in. Yeah, from way out in center field. Good. This will tire out Cleveland's bullpen. He did knock him off the plate. It's a World Series. What are you supposed to do? It's not batting practice. Hershiser doesn't like the first sign. Now he's ready. The wind and the 2-2 pitch to Polonia. Hit high in the air to right field. Back goes Ramirez. This ball is gone. Luis Polonia, who twice in this ballpark has shown the Cleveland Indians that he can pull, hits one up over the right field fence. It's a one-run ball game, two to one Indians. And he got that out with plenty to spare. He hit the daylights out of that ball. Ramirez took one step back, turned around, and watched it fly. Only three hits allowed by Oral Hershiser. So the Braves looking to get something on the board. Klesko at third. 
Lemke at second. And Dwight Smith at first. Hershiser will work from the stretch. The pitch to Grissom chopped on the left third base side. Oral Hershiser tries to barehand it and can't get it. It'll go as an infield single. A swinging bunt for Marquise Grissom. Clusco hot puts it home. And the Braves get a break. It's going to be a single and an RBI for Grissom. And we are tied. Tell you what, if he comes up with that ball, he's got an easy force play at the plate. I don't think he even had to bare hand the ball. If he uses his glove, he still gets the runner at home. A big break. Jim Tomey, 25 years old, born and still lives in Peoria, Illinois. Maddox ready, the one-two pitch. Change up, hit hard up the middle, base hit. That brings Bayerga home. Albert Bell on his way to third. Marquise Grissom up with it. An RBI single for Jim Tomey. The Indians lead it 3-2. to two. Here is Manny Ramirez. He has struck out, grounded out. He homered last night off of Wohler. The pitch. Fast ball, base hit, right field. Bell will score. Tommy holds it second. 4-2 to two, Cleveland. Still three and two on Jim Tomey. Clons again ready. Another three two pitch on the way. And Tomey swings, sends a fly ball, deep center field. Marquise Grissom goes back, looks up, it's gone. Home run to straightaway center field for Jim Tomey. And the Indians now lead it 5-2. to two. Second RBI of the game for Tomey. And that ball traveled a long way. It's 405 feet to straightaway center. It goes a little deeper than that as it moves toward left center field. And that's where that ball went out. That ball had to be hit a good 430 feet. Easily. And hit like Ramirez last night. He stood at home plate, rem admired it, and then flipped the bat over near the Braves' dugout. Anytime any of these Cleveland pitchers get two strikes on a hitter, it's pandemonium. And with two outs in the ninth inning in the count 0-2, on Ryan Quesco, maybe the most noise we've heard all week. Here's the stretch by Mesa. And the 0-2 pitch to Quesco. Fly ball down the right field line and deep. Back to the wall goes Kirby. This ball's gone. Two-run homer for Ryan Quesco. And the Braves have pulled back to within one. An 0-2 pitch. And Klesko hit it out to make it 5-4, to four, Cleveland. That got him quiet in a hurry, Pete. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The wind by Mesa, the one-two pitch. Strike three, Lemke couldn't stop his swing. And the Cleveland Indians have held on to win game five by a final score of 5-4. to four. It goes back to Atlanta for game six with the Braves now leading the Cleveland Indians three games to two. Five, four, your final. Cleveland wins it. And we'll be back with more from Jacobs Field right after this. Poole may be wearing the highest number ever recorded in a World Series game, number 62. Almost a spring training number. The 1-1 pitch. Fastball swung on and belted. Deep right field. Back goes Ramirez. That ball is gone. Home run.
This crowd on its feet for David Justice right now. Baseball Network showed a sign earlier. It said, Justice, put your bat... I hope your bat is as big as your mouth. Well, he's letting his bat do the talking. A double and a homer tonight, and the Braves lead it one to nothing. We go to the ninth inning. Mark Waller's on to pitch. Three little outs between the Braves and a World Series title. Kenny Lofton leads it off. 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for his last 12 in the World Series. But a dangerous man with blinding speed. Get ahead in the count. Come in firing strikes. That's all you need Mark Woolers to do here. He said he wanted his situation, Skip. He wanted the guy be the guy with the ball in his hand in the ninth inning to finish it. Well, he's got it. Everybody standing here. Woolers looks in. Lopez the sign. The wine. The pitch. Fastball strike. 0 oh and 1 the count. The left hand hitter waits. Chipper in on the grass at third. They play him around toward left. Devereaux camped on the line. The pitch. Breaking ball almost hit him inside. 1 and 1. Boy, a hit batsman would be. Disaster here. He got lofted in game two with a grounder to third, and then in game three, when he worked two and two thirds innings, he issued two free passes to Lofton. Ooh. One and one the count. Both were intentional. Wallers gets the sign. The one one pitch here it is. Inside, two and one. All the way to the screen. Nowhere near the strike zone that time. Alejandro Pena, Pedro Borbon in the Atlanta bullpen. The Rollers having a little team meeting with himself behind the mound. Two balls, one strike. Omar Vizquel on deck. Mark into the line. The 2 1 pitcher it is. Swan popped up. Short left field. Everybody chasing it. Bell Yard got it. In foul territory. Great play. One out. And remember early in the game when they could have pinch hit for Raphael Bell Yard and didn't. He made an outstanding play in foul territory. On the dead run. Nobody else could have gotten to it. Not Jones, not Devereaux. Only Rafi. Paul Sorrento is going to come out and pinch hit here. He's a home run hitter. And a left-hand batter at that. He'll come out to hit for Omar Vizquel. He had a pretty good at bat against Wohlers earlier in this series. Flew out deep to center field. He can do that again if he'd like. Sorrento stands in. This guy's got a lot of power. Boy, that's a big out, though, to get that speedster. Sorrento at 235 in the regular season, but had 25 homers, 79 RBIs, 2 out of 10 in the World Series. And Paul Sorrento's not thinking about anything but dead red fastball. Give me something I can jack out of here and tie the game up on. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Mark starting with a split finger pitch or a slider. Carlos Payer goes on deck, then Albert Bell. One out in the ninth. Sorrento stands in. This place is in Bedlam. Lopez the sign. The line, the pitch, breaking ball. You're right, Joe, but nowhere near. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. Wallers wants a new baseball. Once one, he can throw a strike with. That's Two a, outs away. That's all right. Brinkman's got a pocket full of those. Wallers taking more time than he has all year, but who can blame him? He's trying to calm himself down. 
his adrenaline has to be at an all-time high. Just two more outs, but only a one-run lead. The 1-0 pitch. Here it is. Fouled it back. He had a good cut at a fastball down and in. He had that timed, but he simply fouled it back. Right on it. A ball and a strike. Rollers has been unable to throw anything but the fastball for a strike. That's because, like you said, his adrenaline's pumping so hard, it's hard for him to not overthrow the slider. The 1-1 pitch. Sorrento waits. Here it is. Strong and missed. That was a split finger and a perfect pitch. A ball and two strikes. Great pitch. Great location. Threw it right at the knees and it dropped to the ankles. Sorrento out of the batter's box. Rollers looks in. Lopez the sign. The one-two pitch. Here it is. Swung. Fly ball deep center. Grissom back. He's got room. Plenty of room. Two up. And it all comes down to this. Carlos Baerga, who hit 15 home runs this year, is the batter. Against right-hand pitching, he hit 303 on the year. One more little out. The ankle that's been bothering him, Skip, has been his left ankle. For a power pitcher, you need to be able to keep weight on that back foot and turn on it. That's going to be awfully difficult for him. If he tries to get out on his front foot, he is defeated. And Woolers will throw the ball by him. 51,000 plus on their feet. Nobody's left to beat the traffic tonight, I guarantee you. Mark gets the sign. The wind and the pitch. Here it is. Swung. Fly ball deep left center. Grissom on the run. Yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah. The Atlanta Braves yeah. have given you a championship. Listen to this crowd. on the field and the constables restrain them the atlanta braves have brought the first championship to atlanta a real mob scene out there now the police are hustling off the fans who rushed out and i hope Wallers is okay at the bottom of that pile what a great Porter job them up what a great job by Wolder. The Atlanta Braves are the world champions of baseball. one nothing the final score. Tom Glavin, one of the most courageous pitching performances in World Series history. And Mark Wolders, as he's done all year long, able to close the deal. It's over. The monkey is off the Braves' back. The writers are going to have to think of something else to ask. Beside are the Braves, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills are pretty good. These guys a little bit better. And totals and highlights right after this.